Today is one of the most significant updates in Halo Infinite's history. We're talking new networking model, new anti-cheat, massive changes when it comes to the weapons, and some significant changes coming to the ranking system within this game. And a whole lot more, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. In this video, I will be covering over some things I did talk about in my previous Halo video, but now we actually have some developer notes and details of why they made these changes and some actual details about the networking model changes for this game. So first, let's talk about the new networking model coming to the game. This is going to be the most significant change for this update, Content Update 31, by the way. This is going to be the most significant change because this is going to be changing Halo Infinite forever. And here are 10 significant changes that are coming with this networking model. Now that pinging enemies or locations on the map now work consistently, the Banshee and Wasp aiming radicals no longer rapidly swap between their two firing modes while being piloted. The Banshee bombs now fire immediately after switching weapon modes while holding the fire button or key down. When looking at a vehicle being driven by another player, it will no longer appear to turn in unintended directions. Wraith mortar shots now fire at their intended targets more consistently, so that's important to have your shots actually land where they're supposed to go. Vehicle pads now push players obstructing the spawn area out of the way when spawning a new vehicle. Grenades are now picked up consistently when throwing grenades when standing near a grenade pad. The Warhog and Chopper no longer appear to turn in unintended directions when their drivers use the A or D keys. Grapple shot charges are now counted directly when they detach shortly after latching onto their original target. And finally, the Repulsor no longer has a chance to consume two charges at once. Oh, and also this is going to be completely removing desync from the game. Now there might be some new bugs or new issues brought up. These are bugs that were fixed from the combat workshop, but you should be having a much more consistent experience. We'll have to jump in and play. I will be doing a full review of this update later on on the channel here as well. So guys, make sure you tap subscribe. Easy Anti-Cheat has now come to Halo Infinite on PC as well. This is going to be very important as cheaters are still prevalent within the game but much more at the higher end side of things but this will be a much more universal form of your anti-cheat to put into the game because i think previously they had their own proprietary arbiter i think is what they call it anti-cheat and from my experience i haven't really come across a whole lot of cheaters but having a much more generalized easy anti-cheat which is used in many other games out there that you might see faster updates or better reporting systems and things like that now we have seen some issues with cheating especially within apex legends with which uses easy anti-cheat and there's some serious concerning problems with that game right now but from what i've seen and what i've looked into it it does seem like it's very apex legends focused rather than just easy anti-cheat as a problem but seeing these type of problems come up with apex legends why wouldn't they come up with halo infinite we just don't really know at the moment easy anti-cheat is also used by the master chief collection and we do see cheaters happen there as well uh, of course if this sees a rise in cheaters or a decline in cheaters or if something becomes more prevalent i'll definitely share with the guys here on the channel but my assumption with easy anti-cheat that it'll be much easier to update or ban players or detect players easier significant changes are coming to the rank system about how you earn csr within the game 343 are trying out an experimental deterministic competitive skill rank csr payouts so what does that mean? Saying that players with a CSR of 1800 or higher will now earn 7 CSR for every win and lose 7 CSR for every loss in ranked matchmaking playlists. This is a, basically a big huge update when it comes to how you rank up within the game. We did cover this on the live stream previously on the over on Twitch, which we're streaming back on Twitch now. But the thing is that apparently that players have been feeling like they've been getting stuck or not earning proper rates or actually winning more matches, but then also losing CSR overall, which is definitely frustrating. Uh, they did mention that with this new system that they might see players with like 3000 plus CSR, which definitely could be the case, but they're saying that don't worry, that's more like your overall rank. Your matchmaking rank is still kind of tied into together. And so then you might see players with like 3000 plus CSR matching against players are 1800 CSR, but you still have to find a match in some kind of way. Again, this might only affect like the top 0.5% of players, but this is very important when it comes to overall matchmaking. If it gets very well received and say that the general community wants to see something like this happen, it definitely can transfer over to the general CSR ranking system within the game. So stats like kill death ratio, which are heavily weighted about how you earn CSR within the ranking system are kind of meaningless at this level. Overall, I think it's a good change and we'll see maybe if they'll bring it out to the rest of the CSR payouts because I would like to see it because a lot of times I'm winning and still overall losing CSR, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Next though, we got to talk about 
Firebright Custom Mode Variant. Effectively, what this is doing is letting all like the in-game logic of Firefight still exist, but then being able to remove the King of the Hill aspect of it. And so you can have classic Firefight within Halo and possibly have it being put into matchmaking as well, which would be an excellent addition because yeah, you, know, you can do it right now within Halo Infinite's Forge mode. And yeah, you know, I've played it before even Firefight even launched on matchmaking, but each game has its own like unique quirks and how the scoring works and things like that. So if you have a unified version of Firefight and then you just play on different maps, which is what I would like to have for an experience and be much easier for the Forgers as well. So we could see classic Firefight mat matchmaking come in eventually, but of course not right now, but later down the line, definitely a possibility. But now we got to talk about a huge change, guys, and it's the weapon balances coming into this game, specifically with like the gravity hammer. We did talk about this previously in my last video, but basically what they did with the gravity hammer is that a bug that affected the gravity hammer's damage and knockback values has been resolved. However, its new damage and knockback values will remain higher than they were pre-Season 5 update. We're seeing changes for the Bandit Evo and the regular Bandit Rifle where the reload speed has been increased and I do believe that is a 10% increase to the reload speed for both regular reload and empty reload. The Commander Rifle is getting a buff so that it has its bloom now resets slightly faster. And we're talking slightly faster as in like 0.01 seconds faster. So this is a very, very small buff. It might be negligible. Again, we'll just have to jump in and test it out play it when it comes to my review video i definitely will talk about how the commando plays out for sure and also saying that the magnetism drop off has now been added to one when it comes to the commando because they mentioned about being kind of slippery at close range so you have a little bit better magnetism with that so that's very important with the heat wave there was a nerf saying that the aim assist has been reduced a little bit so no damage reduction at all but you can see the values here very slight reduction of the overall aim assist so then you won't be able to snipe people across the map if you will with it definitely will become much more notable on maps say like aquarius soccer rifle also received a nerf as well now it takes longer to vent once overheated and will require less shots before it overheats and get the details stats here you can see aim assist has been decreased for the weapon as well overall so this weapon got a significant nerf we just gotta basically just be a little bit more accurate as a pistol saw some significant changes as well it has received multiple changes as its fire rate has decreased and now overheats faster than before and it now requires less time to fully charge up if we look at the detailed stats here you can see the amount of time to trigger to fully charge up has been decreased from 1.6 seconds to 1.2 seconds. Might seem insignificant, but it is a good amount of time to be chopped off right there for out of 1.6 seconds. That's a 25% decrease in time needed to fully charge. So that's a good chunk off. Although fire rate got significantly in there, it's going from about 10 for your maximum speed to down to 6.75 for maximum rounds per second. Now, I don't remember seeing this previously, but the bandit spawn influencer has been changed a bit. We're basically since the weapon has a shorter range than the battle rifle, right? This is mainly a rank thing, but since it has a shorter range, that might have shorter influence on spawns so people could spawn literally within your reticle. And with the zero deviation that's now with the bandit rifle that you can snipe people across the map with it. So they've definitely fixed the spawning when it comes to utilizing the bandit rifle. And also the firing volume of the bandit rifle has changed quite a bit as well, where it's now a little bit quieter, so you'll be able to hear some extra external gaming audio. When it comes to overall global fixes here, we have better stability, which is very important, but also for multiplayer, a really important thing saying equipment dropped upon death will no longer become stuck underneath the map's playable area. I've definitely come across this so many times, so I'm glad to see that finally got updated within the game. That could just be a benefit of the new networking model as well. Now there is some new content for you to jump in and play with this update. Squad Battle Refresh has brought in a ton of new maps into the game, which we're definitely going to jump in and play. You know that's going to happen. So let's go over some of the new maps that they have for this game. Right now they have Perdition, which is a recreation of Halo 4's classic map, which a lot of people love this map. Looking forward to having this come back. It's going to be Slayer, King the Hill, and Land Grab available. Refuge stays on the map. This is a remake of the classic map Headlong from Halo Reach and Halo 2. Well, now still in Halo Infinite. You also have Timberland Evolved, which is a recreation of Timberland from Halo Combat Evolved, but this time in Halo Infinite, which does look very true to the original. So there might be some minor tweaks here and there, but I've always loved this map back in Halo Reach, so definitely excited to jump in and play it. We have a rendezvous, which is a recreation of the firefight map from ODST, now going to be played in squad battles. This might be a little bit more infantry focused. So this is going to be absolutely chaotic, and I'm looking forward to playing this. This is going to be insane. We have Geyer as well, 
which is going to be a recreation of the map Tempest from Halo Reach. A perfect map for an 8v8 experience for sure within Halo Infinite. You have the map Harvest coming in, which is, well, Harvest from Halo 4. Big Team Battle is one of the best modes within Halo 4. Fan favorites for sure. And seeing some Halo 4 maps get some love put into the game. I'm definitely excited about it. We also have a vanilla map of Behemoth being brought in for the 8VA experience. Now, this actually might be kind of fun. Again, another very small, chaotic map. We'll see how the lines of sight play out when it comes to utilizing, say, like the DMR and stuff like that. You'll be playing Slayer and CTF. We haven't had, really had a chance to play enough CTF on Behemoth. Those early public playtest days of playing on Behemoth CTF was actually a lot of fun. Now, I actually kind of missed that. So, looking forward to just it in and play on that and so if you go into the squad battle playlist check out the game list they actually have removed all of the old maps from squad battles and now only have the new maps which might sound a bit disheartening like oh i love the old maps as well but the thing is that 343 apparently has been having issues when it comes to putting new content into the game for people to jump in and play and then making that new content hard to come across had this happen with the new firefight map edition with that refresh but it seems like 343 is starting to understand when you put new content into the game people actually want to play that new content and so with the, all the old maps being rotated out and these new maps being rotated in that you actually be able to chance to play the new content which is great i didn't see anything within the blog post about having the old maps returning any capacity which honestly i'm okay with just because i like having the new stuff to play definitely we'll have a review video on these new maps later on this week so make sure you subscribe so that's all the major patch notes that we had for this update content update 31 when it comes to halo infinite also guys make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch that networking review we'll definitely be making a video on that specifically along with the anti-cheat as well if you guys enjoyed it make sure you subscribe make sure you like the video for the algorithm and i'll catch you on the next one peace out